Hi, this is Russell White with Automation Technologies. You may uh, be familiar with our company from our PLC Mentor videos on plcmentor.com. But we are a uh, full service engineering and integration company. And I'd like to introduce you to a little of what we do in our, in our regular business so that you have a feel for how we operate and, and the kind of products that we put together. So the screen that you see here is a batch control screen from one of our projects that we've done. And it's very typical of some of the uh, chemical processes we might work in, where you have a reactor and you have uh, valves going to the reactor, motors and, and heating and cooling and such associated with it. So uh, we can, if you look at some of the different valves, you'll see some of the different things that we do with our uh, pieces of equipment such as uh, showing a manual status, uh, if we hold on to it, showing the loop number for that particular valve or the name if you're uh, not familiar with loops. But uh, in addition, we can click on it and open it. Now we do have security on this, so I haven't logged in. So I'm gonna have a problem trying to uh, go to that particular valve. So I can go ahead and switch my user. And once I've entered in the, my username, password, then I can go ahead and bring up some control capabilities for some of these different pieces of equipment. You notice that an on-off valve has a simple open-close uh, with some, some other options on it also. And whereas a control valve would have uh, the capability to, to uh, put in set points and, uh, or if it's in manual mode as it is right now to put in a manual output. Now while I'm proud of some of this and, and the ways that we do things, you know, the capabilities to uh, come in here and start and stop equipment and put it in manual and, and override it such as uh, if you need a, um, if you need assistance with uh, if, you know for maintenance purposes in addition I'm I'm kind of I think our our permissive capabilities are cool to be able to show you what permissives that uh, that exist and and what uh, the status is of the permissive in other words why will this not run that little P down there says something's wrong it's not going to run so all this is important with uh, with a control system, and I think we would do a pretty good job at uh, putting together a, a simple control system such as this. But what I really like to discuss during this video is our batching system that we've created and how it might be able to uh, help some of you guys in your facilities to uh, be able to better control the batch and put out quality batches every time. All right, so let's take a minute to look at the overview of our batching system and what all is provided. Uh, notice this is created in Inductive Automation's Ignition software. So that is an open piece of software. It's not a custom uh, Visual Basic or C++ program. It's something that's open that you can configure and work with yourself. Same thing with the PLC, the PLC that this is connected to. Well, actually, right now we're connected to a, a compact logic, but generally it with, a, with a control system to control uh, multiple reactors, such as the system we have here, we'll want to uh, use a control logic, and, and it gives us better uh, capabilities on communications and, and other things also. So <coughs> generally, this program is designed around working with a control logic, PLC for the processing power and for controlling the actual actual devices in the field. And then as an overlay or a window into our system, we have a SCADA system that is inductive automation's ignition software. All right, with that background taken care of, you'll notice that we have three pages that are associated with our batch control. And the three are, as you can read, I'm sure, is batch setup, batch schedule, and batch control. And they do exactly what, they're, <laughs> what they say. I mean, setup is for creating uh, new batches, new batch procedures, whereas the uh, scheduling is for scheduling those particular procedures. And then batch control is the actual control and monitoring of the batches as they run. Now you can see we also have the capability to kind of get a little bit of a snapshot on each of our individual screens where we look at our different while we're looking at our process but the uh, primary place that we're going to be running and working with our batching system is in our batch control screen now you can see there's not a whole lot to see here there's a uh, there's an area where we have selected batches there's an area where we have our, our accepted batches 
or I should say scheduled batches, sorry. And then this is the actual information about the current batch running. Now each, each batch procedure is made up of a group of sequences. So over here you can see what's going on with the individual sequence. When I say a sequence, I mean fill a tank. So if you fill a tank with water, um, then we're going to have a sequence for filling that tank with water. Now, we may want to fill 10 different tanks with water, and that may be our procedure. Well, we'll have 10 different steps in there. Each step will fill a uh, different tank with water, and that's kind of an, a, boring, a boring batch, but it's, it's somewhat realistic. It could be something we want to do. And it's going to work. It's going to handle opening the valves, uh, starting the pumps, and doing all that kind of stuff. Over here, you will see information on exactly what is going on, what valves are being opened, what pumps are being started, and such. Over here, you're going to see what sequences is, is running. Now, if I go ahead, I can do what's also called a single step. So I can run a single sequence if I'd like. And so all I have to do is come in here, and uh, let's just go ahead and, and select. Uh, water charging and so we'll put a lot number in there for this this is this is my lot and let's say we want um, 300 pounds of that and we'll have a tolerance uh, maybe five percent on either end don't have to be real tight yes I'm sure I want to add that and so what I've done if I've, I've added a, a little mini a uh, little mini batch procedure. Now this this batch procedure only has one step, so I can go ahead and accept that over. And now when we schedule batches, we'll see that over here too. They'll come up over here as our scheduled batches, and we'll be able to the operator will be able to accept it into batches that he's ready to run. Now at this point, he can select which system he wants to run on. Now depending on depending on how your setup is, you may have more pieces of equipment that uh, that it may run on, and you may have a mix of equipment. Now this particular system, each mix tank and reactor were paired so makes it pretty simple to um, to select uh, there are other systems where you have several pieces of equipment and they can all be mixed and matched and used individually in different ways so that uh, you'll be able to select them from here if they're available alright so now once we have this batch here we can load it up tell it yes we're sure and it loads up that single step and we're ready to run. You see our run button comes up and and we are ready to, to get going. All right, so we don't have any operator message. Now you can see over here are uh, our different steps for our sequence. We're going to uh, pause, I mean, or check, check for a pause, and we're going to start uh, the pump, open the valve, charge the set point, and, and then so on. And there's, there's other things like storing the batch history and things like that that are listed as part of the uh, sequence steps. So now once we have this going, we can go ahead and hit run and tell it to run our sequence. It's going to start our pump, open our valve. It's charging to set point right now. You can kind of see what's going on with that set point. Now, this is reactor 5000. That's where we happened to be earlier. So if I go over to reactor 5000, you can see that our valves are open. And uh, you can see that the process water is coming in. It's starting to fill up. You see the amount or the weight in the tank is increasing as we go along. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell, running a batch, uh, running a single step sequence batch. And it gets a little bit more, little bit more complicated when you go into uh, uh, sequences or, or procedures, I should say, where you have multiple sequences working together. All right, let's go ahead and look at uh, what we do with procedures and how to work with procedures. So we'll go to our batch schedule page and we have several procedures here. I mean all they're all test procedures. These aren't real procedures but I can select one. Uh, let's select this my special brew. I can go ahead and put a lot number in. My lot number. And the lot numbers are helpful for reporting and being able to uh, tie things together. So I could run a procedure, say for example, with this uh, my lot number. In fact, let's go ahead and make it simpler. Let's say, say lot, lot one. So I can make a procedure, run a procedure, go ahead and add this with today's date on here with the, with the lot number lot one and I could run a single step like we just did and put the same lot number and they would come up together on 
the batch reports. So I'll go ahead and save this. Now I've added that. Save it. There we go. So now that's all I have to do to schedule this particular procedure together. So let's go ahead and I can change a lot number and modify things if I need to. Um, if I have more than one procedure I could modify the order that, that they're required. Now this is in case somebody's uh, scheduling things. If one person is scheduling things and, and the operator has to look at it, they'll know what order to be able to run these in. So let's go back to our batch control page and you see now just like with a single step uh, how, how the uh, single step sequence came up in the uh, scheduled batches, this, this one also does. So I can go ahead and hit accept here and we'll go ahead and we can run it on 5001, that's fine. We'll run this particular batch on uh, our 5001, 4001 combination here. Once I load it, you'll see the load is a little different, so it's going to cycle through the different steps as it loads them down to the PLC. Once it's fully loaded, then our run will become active again, and we can go ahead and run this particular procedure just like we did the single step. And there we go. We're ready to run. I'm not going to worry about running that. One thing that's different here, you'll notice it has an operator prompt. So this, this will pop up and tell the operator uh, when you have manual ads, for example, something that's not an automatic sequence or just any kind of information that you want to send to the operator. It gives them a chance to uh, be able to interface with the system for the manual information. It will tell them what kind of what they need to do like add ingredient number one and allow them to put feedback in concerning uh, how much they really did add you know if they added a little bit more or a little bit less so that that can be logged also okay so the last thing we want to look at is the setup so we have the we've gone through the batch control the batch scheduling and then let's work our way backwards to the batch setup so we can have several different modes with this. We can actually just have a display where we don't change anything. We just want to look what's available. So I can go ahead and select that can have multiple you can have multiple types of uh, types of batches. So we can organize them. And then I can select, uh, let's see, which one was the one we just ran? I think it was this uh, test zero, my special brew. And so you now you can look and see what is what this is uh, made up of. What 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 sequences are part of this? So you can look in here, you can say, there's the uh, mixed tank agitator. It's a level start. So we'll do this at the beginning, and it goes ahead and it starts the agitator once the level is high enough to make it uh, reasonable to start or, or keep from damaging the agitator. Uh, mixed tank water, we can see that, okay, we're charging 10,000 pounds. We have tolerances. We can uh, select things like uh, next button active and, and such. So our next required to advance would be something that would be useful on this. Um, some of these some of these uh, particular steps we don't want them to, to move on automatically so if you look at this uh, reactor mixed tank weight charging yeah we don't want it to move on straight into the flow charging we want it to pause and have the operator tell it to move on so there's different here's our operator prompts that we've just mentioned uh, we can tell the operator to add material one we tell them how much we need to add and and we go on and they, they'll know with the instructions what, what amount they need to take care of. And then once again, they'll be able to have some feedback in and say that they added 2640 as required. So this is it. I mean, you've got the capability to delete. We can edit. We can go ahead. We can move these sequences up. So if I wanted to move the, the water charging down, I could do that. I could delete steps. Uh, and it's it's just pretty straightforward and simple. This is a this is if 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 you're a, a large uh, company such as Dow or Dupont where you have you know you need a whole plant control system that that uh, that is much larger than this that you know a, a much larger system than this is designed around. This may not be what uh, what you need. But if you're a small uh, plant with uh, say three reactors and so several mixed tanks and such. Uh, this would be perfect for you. Uh, it's simple. It's not a lot of bells and whistles. It just does the job. It records the information. And it's cost effective. And it's all open source. The uh, SCADA system is open source. The PLC code is open source. So uh, what I like to tell my clients, if you, if you don't like what I've done, 
then there's not going to be you're not going to be tied to me because you have to come back. Somebody else can come in and step in if they if they have to. It keeps me on my toes, and it gives you guys options. Obviously, I prefer to be uh, the per peer person that you go with. We would like you to, to come to us to make changes and to add additions and make things, but we want to earn that business. So I hope you've enjoyed our uh, demonstration of this uh, of our batching system and uh, look forward to being able to answer any questions that you might have concerning how this might work for you.